Hello boys and girls, welcome to our science lesson on forces and motion. In this lesson, you will be able to explain what is force and how it relates to motion. You will also be able to identify the types of forces in your environment that are responsible for motion. To begin, take a look around your environment. Do you notice that some things move and others don't? Observe the things outside. What things are moving? Hmm, maybe you see people walking, birds flying, cars driving by, and so on. What if you're on the playground? Well, you may see children playing, some perhaps with a ball, others on swings or slides. Ask yourself, what causes the ball to move or the seesaw to go up and down? If you're at the beach, what things do you see moving and what causes them to move? If you have never thought about it, boys and girls, things are constantly moving around us and something is causing them to move. That something is called a force. Forces are responsible for motion. Now, what is motion? Well, when people or things move from one place to another or from one position to another, that change in position is called motion. Motion can only take place when a force is used. So the big question then is, what is force? Well, a force can be defined as the energy it takes to act on an object or to do work. This energy can take several forms. It could be a push, a pull, or even a turn. When we push, pull, or turn an object, most times it will cause motion. Now, let's see how we can use each of these forces in our environment. First, we we'll look at push. A push is a force used to move something away from us. Examples of this can be seen when we exercise. When you do push-ups, you are using the force of push to push your body away from the ground. Think about it too. When you lift weights above your head, you are using this force to push the weight up over your head. There are other instances in which we push things. Maybe there's a big rock that you need to get out of your way. You need to push it in order to move it. At the supermarket, you push a cart around from aisle to aisle. And if you, daddy, and baby brother and baby sister are going for a walk, Maybe daddy and mommy would have to push your baby brother and sister in a stroller. That's using the force of push. And don't forget about grandma. She needs help to get around too. So, if she's in a wheelchair, you may push her wheelchair for her to go from room to room or from one place to another. Think too about when you play outside. As you ride on your scooter, you use one foot to push in order to get it moving. While on the swing, your friend pushes you for you to go higher. At times too, as children, you may even push your friend to the ground. But be careful, you don't want to hurt anyone now. In all these instances, a push force was used. Can you think of other situations when you have seen this force being used, I am sure you can think of many. Now, let's take a look at the force we call pull. When we pull something, we are moving this object closer to us. Examples include pulling a toy wagon. That's one way in which we pull things. Also, when we do lifts, on a bar or 
when we try to open a door these are examples of us pulling other instances may include you carrying or pulling your carry-on luggage at the airport it may also be that you're reeling in a catch when you go fishing that's pulling additionally when you play tug of war you and your opponent are both pulling can you think of other instances when you use this force of pull now what about a twist or a turn well this force is used to turn or rotate something on an axis or a central point we can see this force in action when we dance yes when you turn your waistline that's the twisting or turning motion you're using also when you want to turn the knob of the door to open it that's using a turning motion additionally if you have to put the key in the door to open it first you will have to twist the key or turn it in order to unlock the door maybe you have a fan that needs adjusting so in order to adjust it you have to turn the knob to make it either go higher or at a lower speed some fans use this kind of button what if you're thirsty well you will certainly need a drink of water or juice of some kind in order to get that water from the bottle you would need to turn the cap that's using the force of turn while these are just a few instances in which we apply this force I am sure boys and girls that you can think of many others so what are the key points in this lesson first motion is the change in position and object experiences due to applied force that's the first key point the second key point a force can be a push a pull or a turn and finally a force is needed in order for things to move so motion cannot take place boys and girls without an applied force now before you go there's an activity for you to do here is a table that you can copy into your notebooks in the first column are some given situations in the second column you are to identify the forces being used to perform each action. As you complete this task, here's a question to ponder over. Can more than one force be applied in a given situation? Hmm. Well, when you get to class, you can share your thoughts with your classmates and with your teacher. Thank you for watching this video, boys and girls. Remember, in order to get notified, to view other videos that are upcoming, you have to stay subscribed to the channel. And also, don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and family. See you soon in the next video.